Are you wondering how to create a to-do list in monday.com? Well, if that's the case, then you've come to the right place because in today's video, I'm going to be showing you step-by-step -step exactly what you need to do. I'm also gonna be sharing with you a useful template and also making some recommendations and even automation suggestions to ensure that your life is much easier and perhaps most importantly, you don't forget or miss out on any tasks. So the first thing you need to do is navigate to your homepage and I'd recommend at this point that you decide on where you want to store your to-do list. Now it could be in an existing workspace that you have, it could be where you keep all of your projects or alternatively you may want to consider creating a new workspace to store these kinds of files. So as an example, pressing the three dots and I'm gonna select add new workspace. So what I'm gonna call this is something like my activities and at this point you choose your privacy option so open every team member in your account can join or close now bear in mind that this is only available for enterprise plans but that's okay because we are going to be able to um, decide on whether we want to open up our to-do list or keep it closed so here is the workspace that i'm going to create just to store this particular uh, to-do list and kind of keep it away from the rest of my activities so at this point we are going to make sure that that workspace is selected and then I'm going to press um, this plus button and then we're going to select new board. Now at this point, you want to give your board a name, something like, um, it could be my to-do list. As an example, it could be your name here. So as an example, my name is Jeremy, I would put Jeremy's to-do list, okay? At this point, you can select your privacy again main everyone in your account can view it private is great uh, and what i'd recommend it'll only keep it to yourself or anyone you invite to that to-do list so as an example you may want to invite your line manager and then shareable will mean that anyone outside your account with a link can access it so you don't really want to select that let's leave it at, at private for now when it comes to this option you want to leave this at items okay because the other ones will not um, suffice tasks would suffice but items seems to work best so let's leave it as items for now and then you want to press create board just wait for that to generate and at this point you will have an initial to-do list template. Now this, to be honest, works particularly well. You may want to add some further columns and I'll walk you through how to do that in a second. But in terms of the kind of initial setup, what I'd recommend that you do is you set up three different groups. And these are just ways to essentially um, group together your, your, your tasks and ensure that you can kind of map them to where they're currently at in terms of their progress. So what I would do is I would call this first one to do, or you could, and you could put slash something like outstanding. Here, you want to rename this as doing or something like in progress. And in the last group, you want to say something like done slash completed. Now, I also like to change the colors here. So if you select one of these and then select this little icon here, I'm gonna put this as a nice green. That suggests, you know, green typically uh, coincides with completion. In terms of doing and in progress, you can you can choose the colors that kind of, um, you, you know, you think are most appropriate. A lighter green can work, but I actually quite like a blue for this. And then for the to-do and outstanding, uh, gray is quite a good kind of color. That implies there's not really been much progress. So that's the first thing I would do is set up those groups. From there, this is where you're gonna start to put in your to, uh, items, your action items. So it could be, as an example, for the purpose of this demo, it could be, record YouTube video. It could be something like um, publish video to YouTube. As you see, I've not yet done these two activities. As an example, done completed, that could be something like um, video idea to do list monday.com. Just as an example, I just wanted to show you some example uh, tasks that you can kind of put in here and how this kind of typically works. Now at this point we've got person. Now because this is your own to-do list, this will typically just be you and your account. So you don't really need to do anything there. You can auto add you to add yourself to all of these, but I'm gonna be showing you an automation to save yourself having to do that going forward. When it comes to the status, the defaults in monday.com are, if you click on this, working on it, stuck and done, and then you've got this kind of clean label. I would edit them, so select this edit label, and at this point, I would literally just go through and I would just do something like, um, 
in progress. You could put you could put in progress, um, done, uh, or, or something like doing, doing. No, let's leave this T to do, doing, done. Then if you wanted to, you could put something like uh, on hold. So maybe there's an activity that you can't quite do at the moment. There's a reason why it's on hold. So I'm going to put on hold there, uh, and I'm just going to change the colours. So to do would be the grey. I'm just going to keep this in line uh, with what we've got here. I think that makes a kind of logical sense. So I'm going to go for American grey. Doing is going to be, we went for like a blue. Doesn't have to be exactly the same. Done, green. And then on hold, we're going to have this as a red because, okay, that cannot, that cannot be changed. So we're going to leave that. Okay, we'll leave that as grey. And then to do, we'll put this as a, let's put this as a yellow for now. Okay, and then hit apply. So these are our four different statuses. So this technically shouldn't be done because it's in the to do and outstanding. So let's put that as to do. And let's put this one as, uh, let's leave that as to do as well. And then this would be doing, doing, and then as an example, done. I just wanna show you how this kind of works, the status column, because these are essentially mapped to these different groups. Then you've got dates. So I would literally change this column to date due or you could have another column as well. You could have date due, and then you could add a new column, and you could call this column, we're looking for the date, we could call this, so date due, um, expected completion date, because it may well be that the task is due on the 25th of April, but you're not expected to complete it to the 26th, just due to your kind of timelines and, and, and priorities. So we've got that as well. Talking of priorities, you might want to add another column called um, priority. So this just, if you've got a lot of different tasks and you're not quite sure what to do uh, and when, a priority column can work really, really well. So as an example, this, let's just say this is a high priority, this is a medium, and then this is a low. Let's just say this was critical. And then do you see how I'm kind of manipulating the different tasks here? Now, of course, we'd be updating these as we go along. So that's the essence of the template. Now, there are other columns you might want to add. You can press the plus button, and there are just different things that you could do here. You could um, you could even put a checkbox in if you wanted to. That's another option. You could put a timeline in. Um, so as an example, you could have something like start date and end date, and then you could put a timeline in, and it just shows you how long each task took to do. That's an, uh, another option. Um, so yeah, I'm actually gonna put one more in here. I'm just gonna do date start date now this may be overkill for you you may not require all of these different columns but they do work particularly well um, for kind of tracking tasks now that's about right there so that's your kind of base template okay and from here you can always kind of set up different views so you could have like a gantt view a calendar view a calendar view can work really really well if you just want to see uh, your your to do your to-do list visually so do consider that and all you essentially do is just press that button and then um, it's going to pre-populate based on every item that you've put in there. We've also got the color coding as well. Now item five, if I look at this, that's essentially because item five has not been named. So um, let me just, let me just, yeah, something like a demo. Let's call this, let's, let's get rid of this one. We don't need that one. So as you can see, I've just changed that, double click if you wanted to change any of the tasks. And then let's say we didn't need this anymore, we just press delete. Okay, and then if I went to the calendar, then that's all gone and it all kind of makes sense. So that's just the calendar view. I now want to show you some automations to make this to-do list much more manageable and easier to kind of, you know, what you want to essentially do is just minimize the amount of manual work that you have to do. So as an example, all you need to do to set up an automation is you just need to click on automate, the button here towards the right hand side. Now at this stage, it's best to create a custom uh, automation. There's loads already in here by default. There's a lot of ones that monday.com have set up and that you can leverage. Um, but so as an example, when date arrives, notify someone, but it's just typically best to create them from scratch because you have full control that way. So when this happens, so when, a, when the status changes to status, when status changes to done, then move item to done completed create automation so i've created that so when the status changes to done move the item to done completed that is on if you want to turn it off at any point you could do that so you can toggle it on or off um, to see how it kind of works for you so as an example let's just say item three is now done 
that has now moved to the bottom. So you see, I didn't need to drag that. I didn't need to drag this down or recreate it down here. It's just kind of automatically done. So that's one automation I want to show you. The next automation you may want to consider doing is uh, you may want to consider notifi notifications. So as an example, uh, you may want to, let's put date arrives. So when a date arrives, so when when the date uh, arrives, let's, now this is where you need to kind of think about your workflow and when you want to be notified. So do you want to be notified, say, a day before that task is due? Do you want it to be a week before? What you'd essentially do is work that out and then plug it in. So let's just say you want to be notified a week before the task is due. So when to notify on this date? Seven days before and then you can put the time in. So let's just put in 9 a.m. So seven days before the date arrives, then notify, and then you just put in yourself. So uh, that's the, um, the the personalized message that you can put in. So um, you could say something, you could literally replicate this. So, uh, and you can also populate the field. So as an example, um, hey, username, where is it? item name is due in seven days time done and then you basically just click the someone so it's going to be me because it's my to-do list so seven days before the date arrives notify me create automation and now i just need to choose the date column um, because i've set up three different dates in the un underlying template so the date due in this example is going to be date due so seven, seven days before the date is due, then notify me. Create automation. So that's another automation that you may want to set up. Of course, you can manipulate this to your own needs. It could be a day before. You might even want to notify someone else. It could actually be your line manager, as an example, or just someone else that you work with. That's, that's assuming that you want people to be aware of your to-do list and that you're sharing it with them. So that's how to create a to-do list in Monday.com. It's where I'd, re you know, I've talked about where I'd recommend storing it, kind of privacy. I've also walked you through an example template, how to kind of customize it further. I've talked about the different views as well. So the calendar view is one of the primary ones that you may want to look at. I've also just talk, talked about general organization and also automation. So I hope this video was useful. Any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below and I'll get back to you. And with all that said, best of luck with, with Mono.com and your to-do list. And I hope you have an excellent day.